Usually on YouTube, people demonstrate like the best way to do something, like the optimal pathways of self-care, no bad habits, no skipping steps. I'm not demonstrating that today. Hey, y'all. Welcome to part two of how to look amazing when you feel awful on a day when I legitimately feel awful. We're like really doing it. We're going the whole nine yards. Today, I'm going to transform from feeling awful Hannah into feeling awful Hannah who just looks amazing for someone who feels as awful as I do. If you missed part one, then check the description box below this video. Part one was like how to look amazing when you feel awful and you have to be somewhere in maybe a professional capacity and you really want to look polished and put together. So in part one, we were like fighting looking awful. Today, it's how to look amazing when you feel awful, but under slightly different circumstances. It's going to be a hot take on how to look amazing when you feel awful and one that I'm, one of which I am particularly fond. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm Hannah. I love beautiful things. I love style and fashion and makeup. And I really like making videos where I talk about how to make use of the things that you already have to solve certain problems, affect certain kinds of appearance, and make yourself feel certain ways. I don't know if the grammar really panned out in that sentence, but we're just going to move on. If you aren't subscribed and you enjoy this while you're watching, I dearly hope that you will subscribe to my channel. Let's go ahead now and get right into the meat of this video. Why do I feel awful today? I, it's like everything. I overslept, which I just hate these days. I've been getting up early to work on a project and my schedule is such that when I oversleep, which I haven't done at all, for like weeks, I've been pretty good about it. And today I really let myself down. I over forgot, forgot to set my alarm and I missed my entire window for working on that project. So that really bummed me out and set the day off on kind of a bad foot. But I think that part of why I overslept is because I'm just a little bit not quite right. My tummy kind of hurts and I just took my vitamins and they kind of upset my stomach. So like I woke up feeling a little bad. Sorry, I'm, I'm not gonna complain like this for the whole video. I'm just, I just feel like you need to get on my level so that you understand the full import of the project. There's no disaster, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It's just one of those days on which I feel like nothing's going right to begin with, and then on top of that, I have more to do than I have time to do in the day. My hair's dirty, my makeup brushes are all incredibly dirty, but I'm gonna be using them anyway in this video. As I said in the first video, it's okay to look awful or not look amazing when you feel awful. If I wasn't filming, if filming this video wasn't one of the things on my long list my long to-do list for today, I would probably just continue looking like this for the whole day and I would execute all of my tasks and try to make myself feel better looking like this and that would be totally fine. But sometimes I wake up feeling like this and I have, let's just say, someone to impress. So today I'm going to be talking about how you can look amazing when you feel awful, but your reason for wanting to put yourself together a little bit is not necessarily like a professional reason or professional setting, but rather something more social. So you feel awful, but you have to, or you want to like show up at a brunch, for example, or you feel awful, but you happen to have a Zoom call with someone on whom you have a crush. You feel awful, but you've been invited to a rager and you know that once you get there, you'll feel a little better and your crush is probably gonna be there so you want to show up because you want to kiki. You want to feel like you look alluring in some way, but you just cannot get it together to strip away how awful you feel and apply like a put together, confident, polished, sexy version of yourself to go to the rager. So you need something in between. That's what we're going to be talking about today. That's what I'm going to be doing today. I love to put myself together when I feel awful in this way that kind of still signals that I feel awful, but turns it up in a way that really has a certain je ne sais quoi and can actually be in some situations like the best look, like the best thing you could do. Let's proceed. And if that didn't make sense to you, maybe it will make more sense as the video unfolds. Basically, if you feel awful, but you have to go to a meeting or to an, a, a slightly professional event, go with a strategy in video one. If you feel awful, but you're going to be seeing someone, some friends or some, some people socially, and you'd like to have a little je ne sais quoi about you on that occasion instead of just showing up looking like 
you know, how you woke up when you felt awful, then you go with the strategy in this video. So I woke up pretty recently. I'm filming kind of early this morning. I don't have any skincare on my face and I didn't even wash my face. I usually rinse my face when I wake up in the morning and then like apply a bunch of skincare. I didn't do any of that because this is like real life, realistically. So usually on YouTube, people demonstrate like the best way to do something, like the optimal pathways of self-care, no bad habits, no skipping steps. I'm not demonstrating that today. This is my bare face, the way that I woke up in the morning. I'm going to do some like the minimum kind of to it in terms of makeup in most ways, but it's feeling kind of dry and tight. So if this was really a day on which I had to look amazing when I feel like this, this is truly what I would do even though it's not ideal. I don't do this a lot, but sometimes when I just can't hack it and I'm feeling like something is better than nothing, I just go in with skincare on top of my unwashed face in the morning. I just do, okay? So I pulled this. I've been testing this Phytosurgeon's Verdant Force Field. It's such a nice, it's, a, it's like this beautiful matcha green cream. Usually for morning skincare, I start with something more serum-y and I let it sink into my skin and then I layer something else on top of it because I find that if I just use one cream, just one cream morning and night, I'm not getting enough hydration from that these days, not, not enough moisture. But this is sort of just a one-off. And so I picked something that I feel like isn't too heavy, but definitely has an occlusive property to it. So it's not just gonna sink into my skin and disappear. I feel like it's absorbable enough that my skin will be able to absorb something from it, even though it's the only thing on my skin and I didn't prime my skin by washing it, dampening it, or applying a more watery serum. I feel like it can still get something from this cream but it's also not so thin and watery that it's just gonna disappear and my skin's gonna go back to feeling dry again. It really leaves a presence on my skin that you can even kind of see. Not bad for having just woken up, done nothing, and then put that on. And I do feel like it's actually really primed my skin better, woken me up a little bit. This is a beautiful product. I have a full review of Phytosurgeons coming pretty soon. Mm, pretty soon. Maybe not super, not as soon as I would like for it to be, but um, pretty soon. And I'll be talking about a couple skincare products in that review as well as m most or all of the makeup, I think. But, you know, spoiler alert, I've been incredibly impressed by the brand. It's been so fun to get to know their products. So step one for this strategy I mean, I'm not going to say that skincare is necessarily step one because you could definitely do this look without doing any skincare. And if you can't pull yourself together to do any skincare and you want to just go straight in with a couple of little suggestions that I'm going to make, that would be fine. And that's also very true to life. So we're actually, that's just what I was doing today because my skin is feeling so dry and I'm, I was, I, I felt capable of it, you know? But now we're going into the actual step one of this look. And this is really the main thrust of the look. And everything else is sort of like accoutrement that support it and make it work with the goal. But the main feature of this look is a grungy eye. It's like eye makeup. So even though we feel awful, we're applying eye makeup. But we're doing it in such a way that it doesn't look labored. It doesn't take, it isn't labored, like it doesn't take time. It doesn't feel like it takes precision and effort. It's not something that you can mess up. And it's the kind of eye look that really leans into the feeling, the kind of awfulness that I am feeling today and that you on occasion might experience that might cause you to grasp for like a pre-tailored set of steps to put yourself together to make you look amazing, which is what I'm offering today. And speaking of phytosurgeons, the main product that I'm going to use for this is one of their flash fluorescence eyeshadows. It's from the Weathered Woods collection. It's called Chilled Cherry. I like using a single eyeshadow in a pot for this look because it's unintimidating and it's not complex. It feels really approachable. It feels like I'm not gonna have to try too hard to make something work with this product. And this formula, the flash fluorescence formula from Phytosurgeons, 
it is particularly easy to work with and has impressed me particularly. It's a really, it's really thin, physically thin. So it looks like a cream, like one of those Charlotte Tilbury pot creams or something, but it's not. When I first started testing these, I was surprised by how much picked up on my brush because you swirl it and it doesn't make a dent. It's kind of hard. So it feels like not much is coming off, but then actually quite a lot will come off onto the brush. So I'm just going to put this all over both eyes, all over both lids, and also on my lower lash line. I'm just gonna sort of buff it out and floof it out and not worry too much about the shape, the precision, anything. It is shimmery and it has a beautiful color, but the pigment is kind of in between. It's not like a super intense, rich pigment. So it works particularly well for putting messily all over the lids because it's hard for a product like this to get out of control to the point where it really looks like you've made a mistake. And I'm not even priming my lids today, partly because I'm skipping steps because I feel awful, you know, but also because this product is really sturdy and it performs better than any eyeshadow in, a, in this format that I've ever found performs without primer. Like it's really, really an effective product. But also, if my eyes crease and it starts kind of wearing away and looking messed up, that's actually okay. And it would just improve on the, the look actually, because I'm basically trying to apply an eye look that looks like I slept in it. I'm trying to show up at this event or on this Zoom call with my crush or whatever, looking like I didn't put on any makeup this morning. I just kind of woke up with this messy eye look still on my eyes and it looks really sexy. So the creasier, the smudgier, the better. So that was just one application. So I swirled this brush and I'm using the Refer 13. In terms of the eye look, this look just uses two brushes. The Refer 13, which is like a smallish blending brush, and the Refer 03, which is their pencil brush. Both of them, again, are really dirty because I haven't had time to wash my brushes, but it's okay. Right? And it's not something we're worrying about on a day like today. So I swirled the number 13 multiple times around and around in the pot. And then I painted onto my lids with the brush on either side. And so I kind of got all the product from one side of the brush onto one lid and all the product from the other side onto the other lid. Then I went back with the fluffy tip of the brush and blended the edges of what I had painted on out on both sides and that's it. Very quick, not stressful, and definitely looks like I could have fallen asleep with eyeshadow on and then woken up with it looking like this. So now I'm going to apply the shadow onto my lower lash line with the pencil brush and then I'm gonna use the fluffy brush to buff it out pretty far. I think that there's some leftover eyeshadow or something on this pencil brush, which is actually just adding to the effect. If you feel truly awful and you're willing to do something, you're willing to do this, but you're really, really needing to do the least overall, this could be it. You could just stop here, throw on mascara, do the couple of other things I'm gonna talk about and then go. Or if you don't customarily wear that much eye makeup or you feel like you have features that don't really carry like a lot of eye makeup as well as they carry a more delicate application of eye makeup, then this might be it for you. But I have the opposite. I really like to do the most in one area with my silhouette or with my makeup. So I am going to do the most, the, the version of this doing the least that is doing the most. And for me, that means bringing in an eyeliner. The other thing is for me, something about my eyes, the shape of my eyes, it can look a little bit funny when my waterline is completely bare and then I have on sort of grungy makeup and mascara around it. I always like to fill in that waterline, although not everyone is like that. For some people, they can leave their waterline bare and it, and it still looks kind of like natural or fine. So I'm gonna go in with this Surat Smoky Eye Baton. It has a nice creamy kind of like grungy, brownish gray eyeliner. And then on the other end, it has this eyeshadow shadow with like a little sponge. And I'm mostly just going to use the eyeliner, but I might dip into the little sponge and the little eyeshadow a little bit to buff out the eyeliner. I think that, it do, I don't think that you need this exact product or a product like it. In fact, I think that with a lot of eyeliners, you can kind of smudge them and draw them all around your eyes and then use an eyeshadow brush to smudge them out. This one doesn't feel as creamy as it did when I first got it. So I, I find that I have better luck creating a diffused edge if I use both sides of the product. But really this step is just about eyeliner. So I drew it in my waterline and I also drew underneath my waterline. And this is important because to look like it's sort of natural or smeared or slept in, 
it's important not to have any super clean lines. And having the waterline have dark eyeliner in it without having it smudge out or buff out to the actual skin underneath your eyelashes, underneath your eyes, that is a clean line. And it makes it look much more like you worked on your makeup and like applied makeup carefully. So I drew with the eyeliner underneath my lashes and inside my waterline. And now I'm going back with more of chilled cherry on the pencil brush to, to buff it out and smudge it out. Okay, now it really looks like I slept in it. I'm gonna do the same thing on my upper lash line, especially in the outer corner, and especially intensifying the liner in the outer corner and then layering back over with chilled cherry and maybe with a little bit of the sponge end to blend it in with the rest and make sure that it, it looks natural and smudged. And I don't know if you can tell, but because it's probably fast forwarded anyway, but I, I'm working quickly. I'm not trying to be precise. I'm working much more quickly and in a much more shoddy way than I usually do because I I don't feel like this is the thing I want to be doing right now. Like I don't, I said this in the first video, but on days like this, I don't feel like sinking into the zone. Sometimes it can be therapeutic to be doing this. I mean, I do feel that a little bit, but I'm also like, I'm ready to get through it and get on with the day. And that hastiness does kind of help with the overall look, but more than anything, the letting go of perfectionism and the fact that the look is designed to be imperfect and that it's about imperfection helps with that. It helps me get through this process of putting myself together emotionally when I'm not feeling good. And it also helps with the outcome of the look. It helps it look the way that I want it to look. It makes it fit with the theme of the strategy. So that is it. I'm sort of tempted because I'm here on camera to like keep tinkering with it, buff it out more, add more eyeshadow, but I'm trying to stick to what I would authentically do if I was having like a bad day and I would, this is good enough. So I think that mascara is a pretty important part of this. I skipped mascara in the first How to Look Amazing When You Feel Awful. That was like a, a look that didn't require any eye makeup at all, not even mascara. But today I'm going to pile it on pretty much. Um, but I'm using this, I'm still using this Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara. It's amazing because it gives me rich, black, lengthened, and girthy lashes, but it has this comb that fluffs them through for the entire application process, and they don't end up looking too splinky. They end up looking rich and thick and sturdy, but also kind of fluffy at the same time. I love it. I got some mascara underneath my eyes while I was applying it, but it's actually totally fine. It sort of works with the look. So that's the base of it. These eyes are the base of this look. And if your strategy going forwards from here departs from mine, that's totally fine. I think that there's a lot that you could do around an eye look like this when you're feeling awful that would get you to a place of really looking great, looking compelling for whatever you're about to go do. This is the most important part of the look. And I feel like it it works for me in these kinds of situations for a couple of reasons. One is that it doesn't feel delicate or precious, and it doesn't feel, if I feel like if I cry at the party, or if I rub my eyes, or if I fall asleep on the couch with my head in a pillow, I'm not going to like mess this up and make it look smeared or altered or wrong. You know, it's like it's already lived in. It's supposed to look like it's been lived in already. And so I can go forth feeling awful and live in it without worrying about it and without feeling like I have I have like a facade on over the way that I feel and I need to work to preserve that facade. And the other thing about it, which is kind of in line with that, is that it sort of says to the world, I feel awful. It's like the, the first look that I did in the first video, it, it was like a little bit of a smoke and mirrors thing, right? It said to the world, I'm sleek and polished. And it was a way of saying that and projecting that without too much effort. This look kind of says to the world, I feel awful, but I look sexy doing it. And there's something very comforting about that. It makes it much easier to move through the situations that the day might require. So you can take this 
this and build on it however you want, but I'm going to tell you what I feel like is important for me to make this work on days like this. And that is actually to do basically as little as possible with the whole rest of my, my face and hair and even my outfit. And we're going to kind of like work out from face to hair to outfit and talk about that. I like to do as little as possible because this is kind of a lot of eye makeup, especially for a look that is both supposed to look kind of effortless and actually be effortless, like not very much effort and not too much emotional effort effort either, either. So I'm going to try to do the least while just putting my skin together a little bit, just a little bit. And um, for me, that starts with just grooming my brows into place, gosh, ever so slightly. So I'm using this nearly completely used up and dried out refi brow sculpt. I'm not filling them in. I'm not trying to make them perfect. I'm not laminating them. I'm just getting them out of their little floppy position and into a slightly more brushed up position. That's it for brows, less than a minute, and I don't care if they're not even. And I'm gonna use this Balm Foundation, the Monica Blender Blender Cover, which I have been using a lot. I'm going straight in on top of that skincare with it, and I'm just applying a very thin layer. So that's the product just on my chin but not on the rest of my face. My skin still looks a little pink, you know? It doesn't look like I've covered it up perfectly with full coverage foundation. You can still see a little bit of the unevenness, little sort of low blemish coming through there, but it's going a long way towards softening the appearance of like raw skin, sort of like red, fresh raw skin that I had when I woke up. And I used a little bit of the blender cover on my finger like a concealer to cover that, you know, kind of bright red healing blemish that I had right underneath my eyebrow. But I'm not worrying too much about covering other scars and spots that I have on my face because the last thing I want with this eye look on a day like this is to look visibly like I have blanked out my face with foundation. And I also don't want there to be like visible caked makeup anywhere on my face really. One of the things that's nice about these emollient balm style foundations is that they're really skincare-like and they melt into the skin and they end up looking glowy, like a lotion almost on the skin rather than drying and setting and looking a lot like makeup throughout the day. Can you see, I hope, I know the beauty lights really do a lot for skin tone, but hopefully you can see the texture there and even the color. The thing is, this is a look that's, it's kind of cute with that, you know? Real skin, human skin, having the skin be a little bit uneven. I think that that is a cute skin look for a look like this, a look that says, I kind of slept in my rocker chick eye makeup and I'm feeling awful, but I'm hot anyway and I'm showing up at the party. It's much more sensual, more comfortable and attractive to have real looking skin with a look like this, even if it's blemished skin, even if it's modeled skin, a little bit modeled skin. It's the look. It's part of the look. So I wanted to even out the overall impression of the tone of my skin, and I did that, but I'm definitely not trying to make my skin look perfect. That would actually counteract everything else that I'm trying to do. So in the same way that I am going to hold myself back from going over and over and over and trying to perfect my skin and be really detailed about perfecting it. I'm at a little bit of a crossroads now when it comes to the cheeks for a couple of reasons. One, blush is like my favorite part of makeup. And so when I get into a situation where it's even remotely possible for me to apply it, I'm really tempted to do it. And two, now that I have applied that foundation balm, compared to how I usually see my face in the mirror, it looks a little bit blanked out, just a little bit. You know what I mean? And especially with such strong eye makeup, it looks a little bit like ghost ghosty, like ghastly ghosty. And right after having applied the foundation balm, I feel like, oh my gosh, it looks unnatural. I need to go in with blush and some kind of lip color and complete the look, et cetera, et cetera. But my strategy for this look is to not do that. No lip product and actually no blush because I think that with a strong eye look like this, it requires very little color cosmetics on the rest of the face to push it quickly over into the realm of having applied a full face of makeup. And in my experience, even with just a little bit of cream blush with this look, that cream blush will make the difference between me looking like I could have woken up like this and me looking like 
I tried really hard to put myself together. And that's partly because I'm so fair. And it may be that if you have a different skin tone, if your skin can handle more, more color in the cheeks without looking made up, without looking rouged, that you will want to delicately apply some kind of very natural looking cheek color but I'm gonna leave it. This is actually the trick of the look. A little bit of complexion, but then leave it. And I'm actually gonna leave the lips too. My lips are feeling dry, so I'm gonna apply a little bit of, I actually want like the least makeup-y thing that I can find. So I grabbed this, the beautiful eye balm. This is a Cure Weiss product that is like a balm for the under eyes and the lips. It's pretty much matte. I don't want, I don't want my lips to look made up. I don't want them to look like glossed. But by applying a product like that, I was able to kind of push the base product, like any complexion product that had sort of sneaked onto my vermilion border or sneaked onto my lips and made them look smaller. I, I sort of pushed it away and emulsified it with the balm and gave my lips like their space back kind of. And I also moisturize them so that they feel a little bit better. That's it for the face. I know that compared to a lot of what you usually see on beauty YouTube and what you usually see me do, it feels unfinished, kind of. But this is real life that we're talking about. I'm not talking about putting yourself together in the way that people do on YouTube. I'm talking about trying to look good when you feel awful and keep everything in balance, in the balance of like not trying too hard and not ending up looking a little bit awkwardly overdone. And in my vast experience of trying to look amazing when I feel awful, this is the ticket, right? You've got to leave it off. You have to leave off the lipstick or even tinted balm or, or um, you know, lip gloss with sparkles in it or whatever, and the cheeks as well. For me, leaving them bare is, is an important part of this overall project. I am going to do the most in one little way, which is to just bronze up my neck a little bit. It's my pet peeve when my neck is glowing like the freshly driven snow when the rest of my face is looking a little bit peachier. And this is much quicker and less effortful than continuing to try to tinker with my complexion. And now I'm going to move on to hair and outfit. So my hair <laughs> is really dirty. It's like overdue for a wash. I'm not even sure I'm going to have time to wash it today. And it's doing weird things, right? It's like kind of helmety in some places. Bangs are where they're not supposed to be. And it looks dirty and it feels dirty and it's it's just a mess. So in the way that the first strategy for looking amazing you feel awful had to do with sleeking back the hair, kind of like pushing back against this state of things and just like getting it all under control, this strategy is about leaning into the state of things and like basically pushing the disaster further in the direction of disaster. And that really is going to come to bear with hair. So I'm just going to use this Living Proof dry, full dry vol. It's like a, it's a dry shampoo, but it's also a volumizer, which is like a great combo on days like these. And I'm just going to spray it at my roots and use my hands to make my hair look even more messed up than it already does. But this that's the point, right? Because when it just looks messed up from me <laughs> sleeping on it and feeling awful, it looks messed up in kind of like an awkward way. I'm trying to take control over the messiness and make it look messier in a way that is guided by my hand. Okay, there. It's the same vibe, right? And I feel like you wouldn't know to look at me that I that I did it like this, right? You, If I was like, this is just how it looked when I woke up, maybe you'd believe me. So it's the same overall look, but I feel more confident because I know that I've sort of assessed the situation and I've made choices about which hairs should go where. And I've given them a little bit of oomph with the product. So I also feel more confident that it's going to stay lively throughout the day. One of my strategies when doing this, and you can do this with any length of hair. You know, if you have short hair, it's just mess it up and go for the bedhead version of your short hair that, rather than the more combed or groomed version. One of my strategies, which I know at least works for medium length or long hair, but might also work for short hair, for getting volume up here is to change the direction of some of the hairs that are close to the part. So for example, this piece of hair right here, when I woke up, it was over here. Just taking that little piece of hair and moving it over here, it gives it a lot of volume and personality because at its roots, it's still trying to go back the other way. And then the length of it is kind of like pulling it down on this side. So that's one way to make your hair a little 
more wild and have a little bit more movement without doing much. In a situation like this, I feel asymmetry is your friend. Okay, the last step of this strategy, what to wear on a day like today. It's actually the opposite of the first video. For the first strategy, I changed out of a sweatshirt and into a black turtleneck. And for this strategy, I'm going to change into a sweatshirt. I mean, I like this one because I, I like how it feels and I like how it looks. It's just like an old Disney sweatshirt. It's oversized, it's very slouchy, and I feel like there's something about the color that works with an eye look like this. You know, it's like a faded acid wash grayish purple, like that dishwater purple color. So it really goes with the vibe in a number of ways for me, but I feel like it doesn't even have to be a hoodie or a sweatshirt, although I do think that sort of slouchy oversized loungewear is a really good pairing for this look. But you know, an oversized sweater with like a big collar, big funnel neck or something, anything that feels cozy and slouchy and kind of tactily sensual. And to me, if I really, the piece de resistance, if I really wanted to go the distance, if I was going to, for example, a party, and this was like the strategy that I chose for hair and makeup, and I was wearing something slouchy and oversized, or maybe like, a slouchy oversized tee or even like a casual spaghetti strap tank if it was hot. I also in these situations tend to go slouchy on the bottom. So slouchy jeans, oversized sweatpants. The killer strategy in this situation is to do slouchy on top, slouchy on bottom, and then a pair of heels, some kind of heeled shoe, whether it's like a heeled boot or even a strappy sandal, like a like a really sexy heel, you know, but with everything else really slouchy and grungy. I find sometimes that when I'm feeling really bad, when I want to show up somewhere looking kind of fierce, it's much easier to put on a heel and elevate everything than it is to put on anything that's going to be in any way like body revealing whether it's the silhouette, like a bodycon silhouette, or even a tight legging. Sometimes I just can't hack it. I just need to drape my entire body in soft, cottony, slouchy fabric, literally from neck to ankle. But when I do that, and then I put on like a sky-high heel, it all just looks so strong. Like it's such a strong look, and it has this real sort of cheeky sense, cheeky casual sense of fashion and also like of the body and of this kind of sensual confidence that it's hard to believe that you can project when your entire body is literally like swaddled. So that's my, you know, fashion suggestion to pair with this look, take it or leave it. I guess what I'm trying to say is that even though a legging, for example, like a skin tight leather look legging with this would kind of be more balancing fashion-wise. It's kind of like the thing of leaving off the, the blush and the lipstick. I feel like if I completed this look with said skin-tight leather look legging and heels, it would just push me over an inch into the realm of having having really worked to put myself together, having made an effort. It doesn't say so much, I feel awful, but I'm a cutie pie. It says, this is how I tried to put myself together. Whereas if I paired this slouchy top with slouchy sweatpants and the whole look was just like a column of slouchy fabric, but then I threw on a heel, that says, by omission, I feel awful, but I'm kind of a cutie pie. That's my opinion, or at least that's my experience. Working with my own features and, and my own stature, that's my experience. And it's just easier, <laughs> like it's better. <laughs> I find it, I find that I feel more comfortable in my body when I'm feeling bad and I go just with a heel as the one way to add glamour to my outfit. Another possible way, depending on what you have in your closet, is a very, very, very low neckline. So some like really slouchy oversized, like if you have like a V-neck sweatshirt or something and wear nothing underneath it, like don't wear a tank top or something underneath it, and then everything else is super slouchy. Just having one thing about your outfit be that nod to sensuality, like showing a little bit of skin, having on a heel, just one little thing. And then with everything else going full comfort, full grunge, full, just rolled out of bed realness. So that is it, y'all. That is how, I mean, I wouldn't say I look particularly 
amazing right now. <laughs> like it's not like you look at me and you're like, that woman looks amazing. But I definitely look way less awful than I felt, than I feel actually still, and than I felt at the beginning of the video particularly. I feel like if I really wanted to glamorize this, if I were going to be doing anything today other than, you know, rolling around the house trying to get all my tasks completed, I might put on like some big chunky earrings or big hoop earrings or something and a bunch of rings. Like you could add jewelry to this if you're going to a party or something, or even if you're going to be on a Zoom call. But however amazing I may or may not look right now, the point is that this is a strategy that has served me really well in the past and I'm excited to be able to share it with you. I think that the real takeaway here is to go super hard when you're doing, when you're trying to look amazing and you feel awful, but it's the kind, you're trying to look the kind of amazing that is leaning into feeling awful. A key part of the strategy is omission of certain steps that you may never otherwise omit, like blush or lip color, or, you know, balancing your proportions with your top and your bottom in your outfit. Makeup-wise, I really just did two things, right? I smudged this sooty eye look into my eyes, and then I cleaned up my complexion a little bit. That is, it's really just the minimum. And the thing that makes it truly work, and the thing that always makes me feel like I made a good call when I make these choices for my look, is refraining from doing more. Because the essential key to this look is doing one thing that makes you smolder, which is the eyes. But in order to do that, in order to be able to get away with doing that while still looking like you didn't try too hard and while still having that extremely casual, like, I don't care, je ne sais quoi, you have to put a lid on everything else. You have to refrain from everything else. Otherwise, you'll just show up at the party looking like you put a ton of makeup on on top of your sleepiness or your grunginess or something. I hope that this is making sense to you. Let me know what you think, especially, as I said in the first video, if you happen to wake up feeling awful today like I did, and you happen to have the, the time right now, or if this is the moment to try this strategy, and especially if it's a departure in some way from what you usually do, I would love to know uh, what the outcome is. So please share in the comment section down below, and let me know if you want me to keep going with how to look amazing when you feel awful. These are like my two main strategies, the the, the opposite poles, the, the polished one, the one where you fight it, like you wake up feeling awful, and depending on what you have to do, you either fight it, which is strategy number one, or you lean into it, which is strategy number two. Those are like my two main strategies, but I'm sure there's all sorts of things in between that I could come up with. So if you want this to be like an endless series, let me know. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself today so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.